What's up guys, this is the second part of my Learn to How to Play Loxbox series that I'm doing. I'm going to do a bunch of episodes, but this is the second one. And this one is going to be on possibly the hardest part of Lost Box, in my opinion at least. That's comfy decisions and sequencing. I'm um, sequencing not so much, but comfy decisions that sometimes feel absolutely impossible. I'm going to sort of break it down how I feel in some of these situations. Um, and I've got a few examples of situations that I've played um, and how I... Um, you know, take comfy sequencing and comfy decisions and sequencing in general. So I hope you enjoy the video, guys. All right, so we're going to be looking at the first game here. And in this one, there is so much to unpack. So we're just going to get straight into it. Here, um, the first thing. Um, so I'm deciding. I've got my comfy. I'm going to retreat into it. Um, the absolute first thing to think about is, um, do you play quick ball first? Here don't want to play quick ball first because off the comfy you are looking for basics we're going first um in this exact situation i saw a zation so I, my opponent's not lost box i'm not gonna be attacking on turn one so not worried about a comfy dying even, even if i was i would still be looking for basics um so i'm thinking okay i need to hit basics so i don't want to play my quick ball first but um i'm going to use my retreat first before i and this is another this is one of the main common sets in, in sequencing um, you want to use your energies first because if you don't find another Pokemon or you decide not to use another Pokemon that you want to switch into, you want to use your energy attachment and your retreat every turn because you only get one retreat, one energy attachment for, per turn. Um, and so even though you'll get the energy attachment regardless, you want to be able to use your retreat every turn. Um, especially in the early game because your Kramer attacks for no energies, um, you want to committing, be committing all your energies as where possible to retreating right because that's the most efficient thing you can do with your energies in the early game um so we start here and we get into our first comfy decision of the game you know me thinking about the energy of the switch cart we go into our first comfy decision and really quickly it's escape rate versus scoop up net um here it generally depends on where your opponent starts and um like in a matchup like against Lugia for example obviously it's a Zacian, so it's not that big of a deal but if they start for example like a Stoutland you'd always want to take the rope but I'm thinking I'm probably going to play it this turn as well and so the net will give me an extra ability so I'm like okay take the net here um these, these are like a less relevant decision taking like you know a net versus an escape rope they're both switch cards and they're both going to be used as a, as a switch card but the net is more efficient and this this point is generally going to be irrelevant in the next format because this will be like two a switch card and an escape rope and you just take your switch card or your rope whatever you want to um if you want to bring a bench pokemon or not and go about your day um so um, relatively easy choice here. Um, so we've got the point where we've got no more loss so no more cards to draw. So that'll be the point where I use the quick ball, the absolute last moment. And what I've found with this deck is that I really like going, um, going for combis, but that's not in sequencing or comfy decisions. And so here, which is a second, we have a second comfy decision. So we already have a chorus in hand as we just saw. Um, so I've decided between an energy and a cold risk. Now the thing is, I already used my energy attachment for this turn. So in a lot of situations, I would take the energy here. And, um, this is coming down to like, okay, how do I... And this is like the main overarching premises video and how I want to like talk about how I think about comfy decisions is, um, is, <clears throat> what was I going to say, is like... Um, how good is it going to be in the short term versus like the long term, right? So here I'm thinking, okay, this energy, it's better for me next turn, right? I have my chorus in hand. Um, like in order to get an attack, I want to have this energy next turn. But I have to think about as many factors as possible um, when considering like in the short term, if taking the short term benefit is worth the long term like loss of loss earning a chorus. Now, I understand this deck. I know that if the loss earning chorus hurts me in a lot of ways, it hurts me. I um, mean, next format, there's going to be a lot of judge, right? So not taking a chorus will hurt you against judge. That'll be the same for Raihan that's also going to be played. Um, Bird Keeper, if you're playing that, I don't know if that's really played in the next format. Am I be rotating? Don't know, um, <laughs> which I probably should, but anyways... Um, but here I decided this electric energy on the next turn isn't going to help me enough, um, because I have a chorus anyways, so I can just get my energy regardless. So, uh, I, I'm probably just going to be hitting an energy regardless and I might even get a better energy, like a capture energy, right? That I could attach. Don't have radiant grant on board. Don't have enough reason for this lightning energy. So I do decide here to take chorus, um, logical decision here. Um, go for another Comfy. As you can see, I used the Scrub Net first so I could reset the ability so I could switch card back into a new Comfy. That's very basic, um, but 
if you're not at that level, then you wouldn't understand it. And um, the third comfy is generally one of the easier Lost Stones decisions, unless you think um, the, uh, the comfy is going to get knocked out, then you want as many comfies as possible, right? So here I'm like, okay, my comfy's not going to get knocked out. And this is where like you think about the, the factors that go into this. Um, You'll be thinking, okay, what are the odds my comfy gets knocked out? Because if I thought that my comfy was in danger here, I would 100% take the comfy over the Mirage Gate. The Mirage Gate is very good, but it is like that sort of, what's going to help me next turn? Like, I'm not really thinking about the current turn because I already sort of have everything for the current turn. The only thing I could ever want is like Greninja and an energy, but that's still setting me up for the next turn, right? So that's something to, so to factor in for sure. But the Mirage Gate isn't going to help me next turn, but it's going to help me later in the game. Um, so... And I'm thinking that this Comfy is probably going to be the least relevant because I'm going to get crammed down next turn. Then he's going to kill my cram and I'm still going to have two Comfies in play. So I'm not really needing this Comfy. Um, and that's very, very common um, in this deck that you'll be Lost Zone and Comfies. They're one of the easier cards to Lost Zone. So we go into our opponent's, opponent's turn here. I will just skip th skim through this. They just go for their Zacian attack and we start with our next turn here. Um, they get energy off Zacian. So... The order, now going to our sequencing, the order for everything, all the effects, if nothing else um, changes, which I'll definitely talk about the factors where this can change later in the video, but um, if everything else is staying the same, you want to Greninja first, then Chorus, then Comfy. And I'll explain why, so hopefully that helps you remember um, this concept. So you want to Greninja first, because discarding an energy um, with Greninja is generally the easiest decision in your turn. Um... Because, like, for example, making a Chorus decision, that requires, you know, you, you needing more information to make an informed decision, um, generally, from what I've found. So, Greninja first discarding the energy is generally a lot easier, um, because you'll know what energy you want to discard. Um, like, you'll know, okay, this water can go, lightning can go, psychic can go. You generally make a pretty easy decision, but if you need that energy, um, you don't want to be using Greninja first. If you're like, okay, I might need this lightning energy, might not, you can be like, okay, I'll throw this chorus down first. Because um, basically you're trying to decide, if you if you know 100% you're going to use Greninja, then you always want a Greninja first. But if you don't know, then you can do something you do know what you're going to do, like for example, chorus first. And then, so in this situation, what do I want to do, chorus or comfy? There's a long Twitter debate on this, like months and months ago, on... What's better? It was decided that um, Chorus is slightly more likely to be better. Um, but again, there are exceptions to this as well. Um, the exception being, if you don't know what supporter you're going to play, if you have the option to play like a Raihan that might help you, um, if you hit it off your Comfy, or if you think that you, you would play Raihan if you got access to it, or if you don't know, or if you're like, okay, if off my Comfy I hit like this, this piece, then I'll guarantee my attack with Raihan, right? That common um, situations like that are very common, um, where you don't want to play chorus first. Not very common, um, but they will come up. But that's sort of the exceptions to this rule. But I think generally, if you're starting to play this deck before you get a hang of sort of these ex uh, exceptions, do you want to be going chorus for um, Greninja first, then chorus, then Comfy? Almost always, almost always, um, unless it's very very obvious that you don't want to be doing that. Um, so we'll start here. Go chorus. We get a pretty easy chorus decision. Lost in the two VIP passes. Um, almost always correct. I mean, almost no reason not to. And we lost in another VIP pass. So not difficult decisions here. Uh, and we simply go for a a cram rate attack by the looks of things. So a bit of an easier turn here. Just lost any VIP passes. Um, getting an attack in. Uh, we'll skip through our opponent's turn and go to our next turn. So they promote a, a uh, their Radiant Greninja. So I'm immediately playing Colrus here. Again, nothing else to think about. I have a lot of options here. Um, like I could be retreating into Comfy. I could be doing this and that. Like maybe going for an Escape Rope, going for an attack with a different Pokemon. Um, but I do have to use this um, this Colrus first to decide. So I see the Radiant Greninja here. That's going to be an Insta Pick. Um, and now we're sort of into this phase where I'm deciding. Um, between these four. Now, I'm immediately drawn to this lightning energy um, because it's a different color energy that I don't have in hand. Um, and I want energies to discard with my Radiant Greninja. Um, but uh, think about logically here. Um, the, the strongest... It's, it's between these four cards. We're going to be picking two of them. We have to take the Radiant Gren. And I'm sort of thinking about what I'm going to do on my on this turn. What's my, what's my best attack? Um, so, you know... Um, I could go for a cram attack into the Great Greninja, but that seems like a relatively weak play on this turn. And the thing I do want to be knocking out is this Magnemite. And there are other situations like against Lost Box. Um, 
where like you'll be focusing on going for a Greninja, but and like especially against Radiant Gardevoir, um, if they're if they're limited on like their their Gardevoirs, you can um, definitely de like they have one Curlier in play that you want to knock out. Um, you will be having to you know make decisions like this, but um, yeah here. I'm kind of just deciding between these, and I'm trying to decide what the value on this turn. And now, if I take this scoop up net, I already have my combo. I already have enough energies um, to go for my Radiant Greninja play, which is the play that I decided I want to do on this turn. Um, so if I simply take the scoop up net, I'll have enough. And now I'm trying to decide, okay, on the following turn, what am I going to want to do? I think in this position, I would take scoop up net and Mirage Gate and loss on the two energies. Might not be what I do in the game, um, but. But I like there is also a risk to not taking energies, and that's something you have to take keep in mind. But in this game, I've lost so not many energies, so I can almost take take the risk um, that is involved with not doing this. It's also worth noting that I will be drawing with Greninja, um, so I can take a bit of a risk on taking resources because I will have the option to draw with Greninja and potentially draw into stronger cards like Switch cards, right? So we'll see what I take here. Um, end up taking Scrub Net. I assume I take the Mirage Gate here. Makes the most sense. I end up taking the energy over the Mirage Gate. I think I think it's like a small margin. Um, because you don't want to loss on too many energies, but you also want to take cards like Mirage Gate, um, that give you power plays on following turns, because I think I'd want to Dragonite later in this game. But I can it, the the um, the argument can also be made that Sableye is um, is very good this game. And in that situation I just want to take energy so I can consistently radiant Greninja. Um, so I guess it's it's a lot about evaluating how is this going to influence the game? How is this going to... Um, like, what am I trying to do? And being really specific with your thinking. Um, obviously, in this situation, I play this deck so many times, so I kind of just make a, dis make, like, make a choice, first thing that comes to mind, um, and just do that, because I've seen the value of these cards and how they compare to each other over time. Um, and can make <clears throat> pretty accurate decisions with that. Um, but if you're if you're not, I would suggest like thinking logically and especially in your testing, trying to think think very specifically. Um, and then eventually you'll become more natural and more natural that some cards are just stronger than others in different situations. Um, but yeah, you're definitely focusing on what's good now and what's good later uh, is is the main thing. So yeah, we're gonna be going for this. And just going to net and going to attack with Radiant Greninja. Um, I put damage on the Dialga and the Magnemite. Definitely kill the Magnemite, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about comfy decisions. Um, and so if we go further into this game, um, I have a comfy decision here. And I'm taking a switch cart over a, uh, a scoop over an energy. Because even though the energy is really strong to Radiant Greninja, I already Radiant Greninja this turn. Um, yeah, skipped a, skipped a little bit ahead here, but I am just going for Sableye on this turn, um, pretty clearly, um, so, see if I'm able to hit that, um, looks like I already Chorus this turn, so I literally just have to draw the Sableye, but, um, at this point, the rest of this game becomes relatively easy, and I think that the later game decisions on the Lost Zone are a lot easier, we'll see what Flower Selecting the decision we get here, yeah, just a quick ball of Mirage Gate, insta take the quick ball, because it is what I want to attack with here, so even though I'm going down two Mirage Gates, I've already decided, okay, I only need one Mirage Gate for my Dragonite, and my Sableye will be, um, taking two prizes, I can take three on the Dialga, so, and like, I think, like, merging your sort of prize um prize mapping ideas with your comfy decisions obviously it's important to do everything correctly with a lost zone deck um with any deck right to to be considering as much as you can at once but if you can get good at coming up with prize mapping that'll also help you um make uh come up with good comfy decisions because you'll know okay i need this don't need this um for this situation so that'll be it for the um for the first situation here um now moving on to the second one on to the second game of the video here. Um, yeah, this is going to be against the Palkia deck. So you see me immediately go for the Radiant Greninja, and I'm immediately going into Comfy. Because even though I have a Comfy and a VIP pass, it's only four basics. I haven't really decided if I want to mention Zekrom yet. And um, we are against a Palkia deck. So I still want to use my Greninja, my Comfy, before my... Um, before my... 
um, Battle VIP pass that goes into my deck because, yeah, I'm undecided on the basics I want. I might want to get a Cramorant out because right now I'm not really able to get a Cramorant out and my Oranguru um, and everything like that. Still indecisive, so I'm like, okay, I'll just get, more, get as many basics as possible, especially when I'm not explicitly looking for like a Switch card or an Energy or something um, really strong like that. Um, to actually do my play on the current turn. Because I already have two, two scoop up nets. Okay, that's good enough. I can search for more basics here because that's a luxury that I would that I would like to have, right? Um, and so, uh, we go for the, the draw cards before we search for the basics. Um, this, and rule of thumb, what I've found is generally correct. Generally, use your, your Greninjas, your Comfies, your Choruses before using your VIP passes and your Quick Balls. Um, especially Quick Ball. Quick Ball, you, you usually want to save, actually, um, because it does get better later in the game. And this will be true for Nest Ball in the next format, um, post-rotation. So, go for a comfy here. Um, pretty, good, pretty interesting decision here. Even though I said I want to find more basics, like current basics and Sable Eyes in a current basic, I actually decided that I have enough um, that... Planning for the long term and taking the Sableye here is going to be more effective. I don't know what my opponent's playing. I see a Palkia. They can easily be an Ice Q deck and Sableye. Uh, they can easily be playing Lost City. So there's a chance that my Sableye gets Lost Cityed uh, at, at some later point. My one Sableye, I'm not able to use it. So something's directly going in my mind, but I know that Sableye is very, very important in this matchup. Um, so here I'm like, okay, even though Capture Energy is so strong, like one of the strongest early game cards, um, I'm like, uh, like, and it'll, it'll definitely make my turn better. I'm like, okay, I have a lot of comfies to get um, more energies. I have comfy, scoop up net, etc. Um, so, I take the Sableye here um, because, yeah, it, it'll, it'll be better later. Um, and it's sort of like that, yeah, short term versus long term. Here, I think that the long term is more important because my short term is kind of already set. I don't have anything I need to do this turn. I'm already set for this turn and I'm already set for the following turn because I have a chorus in hand. Most likely, I'm already set. So I can plan for long game a little longer game a little bit longer, um, a little bit more than I would be usually. So comfy VIP pass. Um, I think I decided here that I actually have enough basics, and I think like the the capture energy kind of like not taking it kind of made me decide that yeah I have enough basics I want to draw for like energies and stuff like that. Um, instead of just going for the scoop up net first. Um, it might have been because I wanted to Oranguru here. I don't think so, though. Um, but, yeah. Because if you have... I think I decided I wanted to bench the Zekrom, and that was sort of like something I was contemplating. Um, and generally, especially with Lost Zone, you can't really take the time um, in tournaments to, to to really think through these decisions. You just got to sort of go, go a vibe check um, all the time. Because if you want to have a lot of time um, for your more important decisions and your early game decisions, like should I VIP pass first or should I comfy? Like, it's 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 a smaller difference than like making a massive um, Mirage Gate decision. You need time to make those decisions. So, um, yeah, go for go for this. <clears throat> And I'm sort of just practicing that on PCGO a lot of the time. Also because I want to get through games as fast as possible, but you don't have to think like that at all. Um, so yeah, it's, um, deck searching here. We go Manaphy Guru, um, just go net. And another thing I want to mention is to play around. It will be Judge in the next format. It's Marnie right now. To play around Marnie, get as many cards in the Lost Zone as you can. It's literally the main focus. Just get cards in the Lost Zone um, because... Um, yeah, so you actually have a stacked Lost Zone, and you also thin your deck with Comfies. Um, so using your Comfies, it, yeah, best way to play around money, Judge. Use Comfies. I mean, we have Guru right now, we won't later, but there's something to keep in mind. Comfy, what do I take here? Switch Cart or Raihan? So even though I took the Sableye earlier, the Raihan is sort of like a, um, a supporter, and since I already... Yeah, I mean, it is a supporter, but like it's sort of less relevant <clears throat> and I already have Chorus in hand and Raihan is like a secondary supporter to Raihan in most situations and it's really comes important when you as a resource to get energies back is the main reason I found for Raihan so here I'm like okay next turn if I want to attack with Zekrom taking the switch cart is very important um, and I probably won't need the Raihan, especially because I have the Guru in play, I, like, putting back the Chorus, I already have Marnie protection, and the Switch Cart might actually better, be better to draw off Marnie than the Raihan, um, because I am just primarily looking for Chorus, and that's the primary supporter here. Um, 
So I decided in this decision it's more more impactful to play for the short term and take the switch card. Um, so so I go for take the switch card. Um, very quickly we go net again, and also it helps me this turn as well because I want to be able to use my max amount of comfies. So I want to be able to go for an extra switch card. Ideally, I'd hit energy. Perfect here. Um, the VIP boss is very good to thin cards, and usually. Like, obviously, VIP pass on turn one, you don't always, almost always want to take it. Like, you'd, you'd rather take, you know, make better decisions if you have enough basics already. But um, it is very good to thin, but the energy is is way better here because it lets me comfy and hold this switch cart. Um, because as I said earlier, you only get one attachment, one retreat per turn. I want to use my retreat this turn to get into a fourth comfy instead of using the switch cart. So, go for that. Um... Go for fire select here. Train court versus switch cart. I think you can take either of these, and it'll be fine. But I decided that the energies, like I'll, I'll probably find enough energies, and the switch cards can be more important. The a decision like this is personal preference, to be honest. These cards are so close in value, um, and like you could be playing parts, so maybe the training court will be better. But it's like kind of more likely that the switch cards better. I, I and like he he can be playing training court as well, so he might give me training court, and then like the switch cart, then the train court is useless, and also helps him a bit to, to give him training court. There's a lot to think about in a situation like this, um, and so it's generally just with experience you'll find um, like the different niche uses for each card, um, and the situations in which they're better. So um, yeah, use the guru. Um, I mean, the, the Guru is one of the more interesting, like, sequencing cards in this, but I don't want to talk about it too much because it's not going to be relevant post-rotation, but, like, should you Guru, like, during your turn or after it? It's pretty interesting, but... <clears throat> I'm going to talk about here. Leave the bench space open um, for the uh, Zekrom, if needed, or for and Cramorant if I don't need it, um, and we go into the next turn. So, this game was actually super interesting because of the way these comfy decisions play out. I'll, I'll let you wait and see. But, um... Yeah, here, I decided I don't want Zekrom, and again, lost only the capture energy, I decided I already have enough basics, and I've already planned out what I want to do with this turn, and I've decided that the literal next thing I'm going to do is discard this energy, so there's no reason to for me to take capture energy, but I'm literally going to immediately discard it, I might as well have the water in the discard, because then it can be brought back, right? Um, the capture energy can't be brought back, so you, you would rather Greninja a basic energy than a special energy, if possible, and like... Thinking about what your very next actions are a lot of the time also helps decide your comfy decisions. Um, because if you leave, you don't, you don't want to leave yourself with a dead hand. You want to have something to do afterwards. Um, and so planning what exactly it's going to be is, um, is very important. So we go for this. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty obvious decision. I don't need the second Zekrom. Um, and, like, I've already planned. I only, only need one Zekrom, yeah. I do just want to kill kill this um, this Palkia. But I also want to leave my options open. And here you'll see, um, you know, you, either of these are good, right? The the Chorus will help me play around Judgeless Marnie. But the Cramorant does give me the option that if I, if I miss the attack, I can go for just a simple Cramorant here. And while it isn't the best thing, I don't actually have a Mirage Gate, don't have a Lightning Energy. It's not looking great for me to actually hit the attack. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go Cramorant here. Um, because, yeah, I'm fine just to attack into the active. So, um, yeah, this is play the scoop up net, go into comfy, try and hit the Mirage Gate, but it's it's looking more and more unlikely, and I'm started already thinking, should I just go straight to Cramorant? Don't think it's right. Um But um yeah, I go for quick ball immediately because I don't need VIP pass. Uh, I'm just gonna go another comfy. I'm still just trying to hit like an energy and then maybe I can hit off the guru the Mirage Gate. Um I hit the Mirage Gate here. Um so I'm still thinking about what I should if I should um, try and hit off Zekrom. Um, I'm already benching Cram, but I should just go and try and hit this Lightning Energy off this uh, Guru. And I hit an Escape Rope, so I'm like, okay, I'll just use that. Go into the Cram Rant. Um, and so, I'll go for an attack. And it's sort of like delaying your options as well, um, as long as possible as well. Delaying, um, like with sequencing, making... Uh, what I say when I'm coaching people is making uncertain actions first. If you know what's going to happen, like when I play a switch card, I know exactly what's going to happen. When I bench a Cramorant, I know exactly what's going to happen. The Cramorant's going to end up on the bench, right? But if I use a Comfy, I don't know what's going to happen. I could I could hit like any cards in my deck, right? So to make the perfect decisions, you want to make the, the actions that you don't know what's going to happen first. Um, so 
Like that guru, use the guru before the crime rate. And that should stay true in almost, in, in literally every situation. Like literally every single one. With, it's almost every single one with this deck. Um, on certain actions first. And if you keep, keep that in mind and you do it every single time, because a lot of the time it won't matter. But um, if you do it every single time, you'll get into a good habit. Um, and I just wanted to show this last turn. There aren't any too, just too many important decisions of this turn. Um, but I do want to show you that um, how the comfy decisions actually influence the game. When you think that they don't influence the game, it actually makes a massive impact here. Because um, I go for Guru, I hit the Lightning Energy off this comfy, and this switch cart... If you look at my hand here, with no more dra ways to draw, this switch cart, this switch cart that we kept in the early game, over training court, is necessary um, for me to attack with my Zekrom this turn without burning a Mirage Gate. So, um, yeah, Comfy Surge is super important, and I hope there's something that you could learn from this video. Um, that's going to be it for me for this video. Um, you know, I, I still, I, I, I know this is fast. Um, I'm just trying to go through it and go through as many things as I can. Um, in as short a time as possible. I hope this helped. Um, if you have any more suggestions for me, um, how I can um, improve this series, absolutely open. I would love to hear them. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching.